Retrospectors. What's up, guys? I just got finished playing E7 on the PSP. There's a version on PC that actually has better graphics on Steam. You can get it for, I think, about like $15. So it's very cheap. But uh, I played it on the PSP because I have the HDMI adapter that uh, I can connect to my TV. And uh, I also just like the way the PSP feels in my hands, like as a controller. So either version's fine. I want to let you guys know that I've basically played every Ease game. The only Ease game that I haven't played, and I'm going to go right to playing the second I'm done making this video, is Ease 5. So I've played pretty much all the good games, at least, you know? So, E7, uh, I've always kind of put it off because uh, it seemed like the, the basically like the longest Ease game in the series uh, besides Ease 8. But uh, Ease 8's pretty new, it just came out a couple years ago. So for the longest time, Ease 7 was not only the longest game in the series, but also the game that takes place like last chronologically. I think uh, Adol is like 23 or so in this adventure. And uh, I think he's like 17 or 16 in E's 1 and 2. But uh, so I, I gotta, I gotta like, you know, I wanna talk about E7 because I have a lot to say. And um, basically, I'm a little bit underwhelmed with it. Uh, it has a lot of good things about the games. Don't get me wrong, and I'm gonna talk about them all here. Uh, I'm gonna actually talk about. I'm gonna talk about some of the negatives first. And uh, I think the biggest problem with E7, in my opinion, I really think it was just too long. I think this game really would have benefited for being, like they could probably cut out like a third of this game, in my opinion. And if not a third, then at least a quarter. Um, I really thought that it dragged at certain points. Um, the story, I don't think it was interesting enough to warrant such a long game. Like, I played Ease 8, that's like a 40 hour RPG. That game, uh, I think, earns the the longevity, and it I didn't really feel like Ease 8 dragged too much. I mean, Ease 8, I guess it was a little bit boring in the beginning, but that's kind of like how it is with most of these really long RPGs. But, um, I don't want to talk too much about Ease 8, but I think the story, uh, it was just a little too small in scope compared to some of the other Ease games, even though like it's not uncommon for Ease to be these small, like, stories. But uh, I think, it, I just, like, I get confused sometimes when, like, because Al Altago was in Jeopardy. And Altago is basically, like, Northern Africa. So it's usually not, like, sometimes in Ease games, like, you know, the world is in Jeopardy. Or, or at least, like, the continent is in Jeopardy. But not even, like, it's only like North Africa that's apparently in jeopardy. Like these five tribes, because it's, you know, Ease uh, 7 takes place in Africa, which is, you know, Africa. Yeah, I don't know. I, I always get confused with that in, in many RPGs. Like when they when they say that, oh, the, the this uh, certain area is in danger. And it's like, well, how much, how big is that area? Like, is this, are we talking about like a city here? I mean, this is... I guess it's kind of like not fair to criticize this because this is another thing that is just a thing with RPGs. Like if they don't use the word world, like the worlds in Jeopardy, then it kind of, you always, I get confused personally. Like how, how big is the problem here? Um, another problem that I think uh, that this game has that I don't know if I could really blame it on ease, on, on like, you know, the game, would be that like some of these characters I just really didn't care about. Like... I think there's too many characters, like, that you swap in and out of your party. And, um, I mean, besides the fact that, I mean, you gotta level up each one, and you gotta, like, uh, you gotta level up all their skills. You're, so it's, and sometimes, like, like, some of the characters I really wanted to play as the most, like Guys, for instance, I was really, Guys is probably one of the most interesting characters in the game for me. Uh, and I think it's mainly because he's the only character from another Ease game. Uh, E6, which uh, E6 I really like a lot. Um, guys, if you have guys and Adol in your party at the same time, they're kind of like conflicting of each other. I mean, you can have like a piercing weapon for uh, Adol, but it's most likely not going to be the case that you have that. Uh, so usually like in Adol, you can't switch them out of your party. So you can't really use guys. Uh, you got to always have like, you know, like Adol and Dogi with... Uh, you know, one of the bow users or something because it's the flying monsters. 
Uh, I didn't really like Elk, for instance. Like Elk, uh, he was super one-dimensional. Uh, what was that girl's name? Um, see, I don't even remember her name. I just I just beat this game yesterday, and I can't even remember this girl's name. That's how forgettable she is. She's the one that uses like the magic. She she also like attacks flying enemies. She Misfera Misira, I don't know. Sigrun is like uh, like Aisha's bodyguard or something like that. And uh, she, you play her for a little bit, and it's just like there's there's a lot of characters in this game that you play as, and I don't really feel much of a connection with them. Uh, I really, I think the only characters in this game that I really cared about was besides Adel and Dogi. I did care about Maya. I did, I actually cared uh, about Commander Raud a little bit. Not like that I cared for him like sympathy wise, but I thought that he actually had like some depth to him, like. I actually wasn't expecting him. I really thought the whole time, this whole story, that Commander Raud was like the bad guy. He was the one doing everything, but he kind of like was just a, a, another hot-headed idiot. Like he didn't, he wasn't evil. You know what I mean? I think they make uh, inferences. I guess would be the word that he's like trying to get Tia to be his girlfriend. Uh, but I mean, he's just being an idiot. Uh, and then, like, you know, at the end, when uh, he kind of cares for Maya, and he shows up, and he doesn't want to, like, reveal that he cares at all, like, because he thinks it's a weakness or whatever. But uh, he had a lot of character development, in my opinion, compared to, like, a lot of the other characters in this game. Uh, I did care about Guys, of course, because he is from E6, and I think he's just a cool character. And uh, he's, like, kind of, like, he helps you, but he's, like, the reluctant uh, uh, ally. That's the best way to put Guys. Aisha, I mean, sure, Aisha's pretty stock, but I give her some credit because she definitely has some character development, and she's a pretty important part of the story. And, uh, oh, Aisha using that Waspinator skill later on the game, Aisha is critical. I, I, I actually had a lot of fun using Aisha when uh, I really don't like using any other characters other than Adol. So that says a lot about how good Aisha can be later on in the game. Um, I do think that the boss monsters were pretty lame, I guess. Um, they refer to these bosses as Titanos, and I guess they're just like... But maybe, here's the thing, like, I'm, I'm starting to wonder, maybe that's another harsh criticism, because I think these Titanos are basically just like deformed giant monsters, like, transformations of just real life uh animals that you would see in the world because it, like again like these titanos are what like giant crabs giant birds like uh they're all pretty much uh like just like weird deformed versions of real life monsters i mean real life animals that you would see in real life um the the dragons i remember the dragons like like three out of five of them technically weren't even dragons like they were like i don't know monsters basically like i think you need to have wings to qualify as a dragon uh that's a kind of a minor gripe though now there is like a lot of good things about this game maybe i should have started with those but uh let me just say right off the bat that i really appreciated that this game was like kind of more mature i guess like they say words like hell what the hell and ass and Dumbass is like mentioned a couple of times. They say that word. Um, there's actually like a scene where, like, I mean, people die in this game. There's a scene where, like, you see bloodied bodies everywhere. I don't remember seeing any bloodied body like that in any Ease game. None of them come to mind. I feel like I would have remembered that. So yeah, that's pretty interesting. Um, there's even a scene where Adol is being whipped and like tortured. And he's like all bruised up and like has scars on his body. And I was like, shit. So yeah, they really went balls hard with the uh, the mature contents in this game. And speaking of like Adol being tortured, I guess this is another negative. Let me just go back to the negative side and just say that like I really don't think this game gets interesting at all until like halfway into the game. Like half like once Adol gets framed, that's when the game really like I, I was more interested in it. Um, that's. I mean, that's, that's, I think that's literally like halfway into the game. I, I kind of wish they would just cut out all that, that, that beginning shit. Like, especially like when you're going to these five dragon altars and, you know, you're just, 
you find you end up having to reach go backtrack to them which i don't think that's a big problem that we have to you know there's a lot of you know we have to backtrack to other parts of the game i mean that you had to do a lot of that in e6 um i didn't mind that so much but uh like i said i just i just really think the game dragged on and and i think if they could have cut out some of that beginning parts it would have made up for it a little bit but anyway, I mean, the game, and like, this is just like, obviously, this, I'm gonna say this about this game, but this game has really, really good music. There are some parts of the game where, where the, the boss battles are, um, especially the final boss, there's a song, I don't even know if you can call it a song, it's like some ambient noise that plays as you're going towards the final boss, and it's like this long, like, swirled pathway and you got to just keep walking and walking and walking while this weird like otherworldly sound is in the background that was a really good moment i think in the game especially for the end of the game The, the title screen music is really good. I remember uh, I like turned on my PSP and you know, my PSP is connected to my TV. So I turned it on and you know, I'm, I turned uh, E7 on and you know, while it's loading, I was like kind of on my computer over here and I got kind of sidetracked and was really into my computer. And the, the title screen was just playing and playing and playing and playing. And I, I remember thinking like, oh, like this sounds really nice. Like it's really relaxing. I mean, it's really sad too. It's a really sad song. And uh, I'm actually gonna upload a video of just like a, a three minute clip of the title, the, the main menu, because I don't think that, I, I checked the official soundtrack and I could not find this song anywhere in it. There is like a variation of this song when you go to Iska Village. Uh, and I really like that song too, but I like the title screen song better. So I'm gonna actually upload a three minute clip of just the title screen on YouTube because uh, it's, it's a really good song. Um, I did like uh, the final boss fight. I like that it kind of divvies up your parties, your party members. Uh, I like very much that you actually get to play as only at all, even for the even if it's just for the the, the, the very last last final fight. Um, I, I I don't really. It's not that I don't like the party system, but I do prefer only playing as one character. I like that a lot better. Uh, I liked it in Ease 6, I liked it in Ease Origin. I mean, Ease Origin, there is three playable characters, but you're not swapping between them during the game. Um, and uh, Ease Fo Oath of Felgana, I actually have not played. I have played, you know, the original, like, Ease Wander, uh, Ease 3, Wanderers of Ease, and I've played Ease 4, um, Mask of the Sun, which I really did not like that game at all. I think that might be my least favorite Ease game. Like, I'm not even kidding. I haven't played these five yet though, so that might change. Uh, Mask of the Sun, I got about halfway into it and I gotta finish it because Ease 4, Mask of the uh, not Mask of the Sun, Dawn of Ease. Dawn of the TurboGrafx 16, really good game. I love it a lot. The English translation, the English voiceovers, I have, I have it all set up. It's really good. I gotta finish that game. Um, but I haven't played Memories of Celseta either. But um, I don't know why I mentioned all that. I got kind of sidetracked. Um, but the ending, let's, let's talk about the ending, because I did like the ending. Because the ending, at least like it made you feel something, and, and it made me feel like pretty <laughs> depressed. Um, I, I felt so bad for Maya. I really did. Like, this girl, like, she, she's been through so much shit in this game. Like, I remember like, you know, she had the Iskin fever, and then like there was even like a part where... You're, you have to go back to Altago because there was, you know, that fog and uh, all this bad shit had happened. Even though you were a fugitive, you still had to go back to Altago. 
and there's like a, a, a scene where you see Maya like almost getting eaten by these two monsters. And I'm, I remember when I saw that, I was like, Jesus, can this girl get a break? She's like a, what, like a seven, a six year old? Like she's a really young girl. Uh, I felt so bad for her. And then at the end, the story of Maya is she's mute because her, she saw her parents killed in some prior war. I think it was a war with the Romans. Uh, so she's mute. And then at the end, she has to watch her older sister, her surrogate mother, uh, die in front of her. And then she's actually screaming, saying, Tia, don't, no, don't go. And she's, you know, no longer mute. And she's, I fuck, and the music is just playing and playing and the sad music. That was a really powerful scene. That's a scene that I'm going to remember. That's, it's going to go down in my, my E's, uh, uh, most memorable moments, actually. I really liked the ending. I thought it was good. I mean, it, I, I felt something, okay? And there's parts of this game, like I've said, man, it's just dragging on. And I'm like, okay, let's just get to the next part already. That's what happened with this game to, for me. Um, another good part of the game, uh, I mean, I, it's just guys. I mean, um, I, I'm a big sucker for when, uh, for continuity. So seeing guys show up again with the, the three fairies, the homunculi, I think they were called or whatever, the three fairies that were in E6, I loved it. I mean, I, I really do think that if you're going to play E7, you got to play E6 first. Like, sometimes with E's games, like, you know, you, oh, yeah, it, they don't matter. Like, oh, just play any E's game. It's not really super connected. Well, and... uh I don't know. I, I think with I think you'll appreciate E7 way more if you play E6 first. So, um, but again, like <laughs> I also think you're not going to appreciate this game so much if you've played E8 first, also because I have I played E6 and E8 and then I played E7. So, yeah, I mean E7 is just a downgrade in every way from E8. But anyway, I was talking about guys. Uh, I, I just like that he, you know, he's a reluctant ally. He doesn't really care for at all. At least that's what he says. He doesn't give a shit about anybody other than his own mission, whatever that is. And uh, there's a lot of references to the Cannon I Islands from E6. And there's even a mention of uh, pir the pirate Ladok, who was also in E6. And I'm pretty sure Ladok is the father of Terra from E5, I think. I could be totally messed up there. But um anyway, yeah. E6 before E7 and and you'll it'll the game will it'll feel more like an like a, a connected story between the games. And finally the the last thing I want to mention about this game and I say this for last because this really is the strongest part of E7 and that really is the gameplay. It's I mean it's a shame that there's so much bad shit going on in my like with the with the lack with everything I just said, basically, but uh, the gameplay, there's nothing wrong with it. I mean, I can't think of one bad thing with the gameplay, aside from the synthesis feature, but, uh, I mean, it's really fluid. I mean, I enjoy action RPGs like Ease, where you're just kind of mashing the button, and you're, you know, you gotta fill up your skill gauge, and then you can unleash, like, all, all these, you have all these different skills, and then you, there's even, like, this extra gauge that's being filled along the way to do, like, this big final attack. Very fluid gameplay. Um, usually in ease games, the way it works is uh, if you're if you ever like find if you're ever fighting a boss, all you got to do is just and and, you, and you're having trouble, go back a little bit, just like gain like one level, and you should like do just fine. It was a little different with ease seven because with ease seven, it, it's really more about the gear. I felt like uh, I didn't really feel as much of a boost from leveling up than I did when I got better gear. So. Uh, and yeah, with the synthesis thing, I mean, it, was, it did get a little annoying. Uh, I didn't, I didn't find myself running too short on money in late game, but I did find myself struggling for gold, like kind of uh, in the beginning slash the middle part of the game. Um, there are a lot of skills in this game, though, um, and there's a lot of playable characters, so you're going to just miss out on leveling some character's skills. They're, they're, they're 100%, you're gonna like, some of these playable characters are just gonna take the backseat while you focus on like your main three or four. Uh, I do, again, like, I don't know if I could blame this game because I've seen this, this, this problem in so many RPGs 
that uh, I almost don't even know if it's like fair to criticize. Uh, I'm trying to think if I'm missing anything. Uh, I, I, I don't even know what I would rate this game like on a scale. Uh, but I don't think I could really rate it more than like an 8. So I think I'm going to just rate it like a 7.5 out of 10. Uh, I just don't think this is not a game that I feel like I'm going to like really like be like, oh, I really want to replay this game. Like I, I, I've i replayed like Ease 1 and 2. Uh, I've beat Ease 3 even, the side-scrolling one, the original one, twice. Uh, Ease 4, I mean, it was just a mess. I got a... I, I hated Mask of the Sun and I want to play uh i want to finish dawn of ease if i could still find my save file on my my emulator on my computer um ease 6 is a game that i want to replay and uh, ease 8 is another game that i want to replay ease 7 man i just don't know man i really don't know it might be too soon to tell um oh ease origin i forgot to mention that i mean I've beaten that game. You, you, there's three ca three campaigns in that game, and I played all. I, so yeah, I basically played Ease Origin three times. But like E7, yeah, I just I don't know. I don't know. I don't think I'm gonna really be eager to replay this game. And and I think the fact that Ease 8 really does, the fact that Ease 8 exists hurts Ease 7 because, shit, man. I mean, Ease 8 is better than Ease 7 in every way. I really I really think so. I really think so. Um. I think the story in Ease 8 was way more interesting and, and definitely way more a grander scale than Ease 7. I mean, in, in Ease 8, like the whole world is is pretty screwed. Ease 7, it's only Altago that's really in trouble. And Altago, if you can if you can visualize it, it's really just North Africa. So I think rec do I recommend this you play this game? I do, but Play all the other Ease games first. Like this should be like one of the the, the last the last games you play, I think. Um, but at the same time, actually, wait, wait, wait. I don't know if I can say that because I really don't. I don't want you playing Ease Eight before you play Ease Seven because then then you'll you'll. I I don't want that. I don't know. I, you know, I'm actually planning on making an, another video separate to this, like in the future, on like what I think the right the good order of playing these games would be. And uh, I also kind of want to make a video like ranking all the Ease games. Hopefully I, I have the time to do all this stuff because that's a big task. But yeah, Ease 7, uh, I guess the one thing I can say about Ease 7 is play Ease 6 before Ease 7. And hopefully you haven't played Ease 8 yet. Bye guys.